Legend of Total War here, and today we're doing another first 20 turn legendary difficulty guide for a faction in Total War Warhammer 2. So the previous one was Clan Moors, and you guys voted for this one to be, for some reason, Silostra Diaphin. So that's what we're going to do. I am Tyrion. The final act. So once again, if there's a faction that you would like me to cover in the next first 20 turn guide, don't forget to leave a comment down below. If it's the most upvoted comment for, for the particular faction, that's what we'll cover next. Anyway, let's get into this one here, and uh, I'll start on turn one. Alright, so here we are on turn one, as uh, the Drowned with Silostra Diaphin. And before we go around making attacks and floundering about like a moron, we need to plan ahead. Now, as the Vampire Coast, you need to know what your strengths and weaknesses are. They've got some major weaknesses, but they also have some incredible strengths. And if you want to play to win, this is the way to go. Their best unit is the Necrofex Colossus. And the way that every Vampire Coast faction works is that their faction leader and potentially a few others will have this sort of horde mechanic. And you can get to tier 5 in this horde mechanic way faster than you can with settlements. So rather than wait until turn 70 or whatever before you get Necrofex Colossi, you can get it a lot sooner if you focus on this stuff. Now that requires two things, growth and money. Because these things here, they ain't free. You're not going to make enough money just through making making taxes. And also, growth is pretty slow at the beginning. So we're going to prioritize growth and money. So, firstly, let's have a look at what they've got that can increase growth and money. Fleet Engineer Office here is going to provide with uh, 10 extra growth to all armies faction-wide, but that's only to the ones that actually do have the uh, the pirate growth. At the moment, we're only focusing on Silostra. Don't worry about the other ones just yet. We don't even have access to them right now. So that's going to be really good. However, we need a rank 5 general with 5 loyalty. The lo 5 loyalty is not going to be a big concern, but rank 5 is. Now, you could recruit a general on turn 1 and have it accompany Silostra in all the battles until it gets to tier 5. But that'll cost you a significant amount of money to do that. And as I said, you got to keep a balance between money and growth. Now, there's another way around it, but it will take maybe a little bit longer. But it won't cost you anything. Use Command Crews in the Technology Tree and get to Centuries in Command. That way you can recruit your generals straight to Tier 6. And you can recruit them, put them in the, uh, in the um, Fleet Office and then disband them, so you don't have to pay anything except for their recruitment cost, and you still get the bonus. But you're not going to get that until turn 14. But it'll save us a lot of money doing it that way. All right. Then other things that we need to do, of course, focus on construction, and also leveling up Silostra. Now, we start off with an enemy as the, uh, as the Blue Vipers. Now, this is a faction that if you don't hammer down on them right away, they can cause a huge problem because they get huge amounts of cheats. So I highly recommend being super aggressive with them and just straight out kill them all. Now you could use these guys as sack cities, but here's the problem. Because you share a province with them, they're going to have huge problems with, with public order due to corruption. And so are you. And so you're going to have to be constantly moving between your settlements and theirs in order to sw swat the rebellions, or else they'll get wiped out. Instead, it might actually be best just to straight up occupy all their settlements, occupy Pahuax over here, and then maybe even use these guys here as a sack city. So at the beginning of this campaign here, we're probably not going to be getting too many levels up right at the start. But right off the bat, let's make an attack on their army that's sitting here. It's the only one they've got to start off with. Now, we might not have enough movement to be able to attack it a second time after this because they have a tendency of revolting, uh, revolting, running over to here. If you attach the, uh, uh, the, the damned paladin to this army here, what will end up happening is that he'll actually end up lowering the amount of movement range that they have. So it's best if on the first battle that you don't attach him. Now, that'll make the battle a little bit more difficult, but in all honesty, this really shouldn't be a problem. You could recruit a few extra troops, but every troop that you recruit increases the chance that they're just going to run away. And as I said before, you want to be getting as many levels up as possible. 
Now, these guys here should try to shoot the uh, the Savage Orc Boar Boys, but you also have to take into consideration the situation. The, uh, the artillery and gunners and stuff like that, they do have a degree of ballistics. They aim for where they think the enemy is going to be, not necessarily where they are. With the exception of whether or not the AI, uh, whether or not the enemy is actually elevating on the on on the uh, on the Z axis, essentially, they'll anticipate where they are on the X and Y axis. But on the Z axis, you know, on a 3D playing field, they they can't anticipate that stuff for shit. So just be mindful of that uh, when using artillery. I'm sure that, that what I just said there probably made no sense to some people. So, I just didn't know any other way to put it. Sirens will do really well against Savage Orcs. Because they have... 80% physical resistance, which is really good. Also, in terms of this... I'd say that that's actually really crap. I never use it. Gotta watch out a little bit. So, Lustra's in... Pretty low health. I mean, she'll be okay. Just, you know, just keep an eye on it. That was almost one. So, close victory. Decisive victory would have been better, but that's still acceptable. Definitely want to go for money more than anything. And hopefully we can still catch him again. Let's see. Yes, we can. Only just. And as I said, if we had attached this dude into the army, we would not have been able to do that. But we can attach him into the army this time. Just as long as we're just a bit in range. Yep, can still do it. Mm, it's gonna be too close. I'd say just leave him out of it. It's just definitely too close for comfort. Let me just move him to here and have a look. Yeah, it's too close. <laughs> We're really gonna be in close calls with it in that. We just need to make sure we get that that win. This time it could just be easily auto resolved. And that way we get two battles out of him this turn, and we got the decisive victory that we needed there. And a little bit of extra money. No, you just got wiped out. Cool. And we can still go into encamp mode, getting decent amount of replenishment. Can he attach? Yes, he can. So he, he might have been able to make it, but it was just too close to call it. And he'll also give us a bit of extra replenishment. Um, so would it comes down to leveling up Silostra. Definitely want to be heading down here. But as for these four, I mean, you can go any one. It doesn't really matter. If you need extra money, you can go for income from post-battle loot. So that's good. And also extra chance of stealing a magic item. Extra replenishment certainly wouldn't hurt. I'd certainly prefer replenishment at this stage here. But late campaign, that's probably not going to be that big of a deal. Unless you go into red territory. But I'm going to go with this right now. Now, we can recruit some more zombie pirate deckhand mob, but I'm actually going to demolish this because I'd much prefer money. And we're going to upgrade this, and I'm actually going to build this first because that'll really help get us some extra growth. Because if we get this, our growth rate will only be plus two. But on this, it'll be plus six. We'll be able to get growth surplus a lot faster, even if by building that, this will then will cost two extra growth. This will have more than provided us with two growth by the time we even want to start building that. And I'll just rely on using Raise the Dead when I want more troops. At this stage here, probably only want just this one here. That's all we need. Try and, try and basically be as stingy as possible. Alright, turn two. So we can certainly attack the High Sentinel. That'll use up most of our movement. I was just considering whether or not we should sack and occupy it. Or whether even just sack it, right? Because if we just sack it, we could sack it again the next turn to get an extra battle out of it. And, or, 
Yeah, and, and occupy Floating Pyramid, and then come back over here, and then occupy the next turn after that. Because they're going to have a revolt soon, but... Plus, if we do that, we'll get a bit of extra money. I might actually do that. Sack this first, and then sack it again next turn. So we're essentially going to sack it twice. Alright, that's fine. So, it certainly has to be fought manually, but there's no threat here, so... It's a no-brainer win. So yeah, we'll sack it this turn. Don't need to create a pirate cove, and just go to waste. Get as close to the settlement as we can. Go into encamp stance, get a little bit of extra replenishment. And that way we can sack it again next turn. And I'll grab an, an extra zombie pirate gunnery mob. Thank you. Over here, let's get some more cash coming in. Alright, that looks good. Now, we don't have long until a revolt occurs. Eight turns. It's probably going to be a little bit less than that. I could slow things down if I was to do this. Maybe just do it for that one turn. Alright, so we'll tax it this turn. I guess. Alright. And we're going to sack this again. Probably just order resolve will be sufficient. Yep. Tiny bit of damage, nothing major. Sack it. Mainly, it's not about the money, it's about getting those experience. And yeah, we got just enough movement. Actually, we got plenty of movement to come down here. And probably sack and occupy this. Because if we have a look at this region, that's this is their barracks. Because I'm probably not going to keep that there. Because you can only hire garbage units from it anyway. Which you can raise the dead for anyway. Once again, this will have to be fought manually, but let's just see if there's... There isn't one of those available, that's fine. This will help us buy a little bit more time before a revolt. Alright, let's do it. Alright, so we should be able to sack an occupier to get that... It's not a lot of money, but it's already at tier 1, so we're not exactly damaging the settlement too much. Yeah, enough movement. And then some. Alright, so according to this, we've got four turns left until the revolt. But we've got to keep in mind that there's a minus 10 penalty to public order just for occupying the settlement this turn. But we're also providing five military presence. So next turn, it should change by about minus six when you take out of consideration. Um, provincial instability is going to go down as well. But still, we don't have a lot of time. We've got to get over there before it uh, revolts. That way we can guarantee the revolt will actually occur there. So next turn we will occupy the High Sentinel. Probably no point in sacking it. Don't think we need any additional troops. And we'll demolish this because I don't need a barracks. Okay, so we've researched command crews. Now we need sentries in command. Still going to take a long time to get it. But that'll allow us to fill up these slots straight away. These ones here require... Oh, hang on. I can do that one as well. Can't do that one. Yeah, I can fill up, I can fill up six of the, uh, of the slots straight away once that's done. And let's finish them off once and for all. Probably could sack and occupy it, but I think it would be best if we just occupy it. Otherwise, we end up with a damage settlement that we have to repair. For 92 gold. It's not worth it. And that ends them. Now, you can use them to, to like, farm them from sacking them constantly. But because you share a province with them, in my opinion, it's best just to get rid of them early. don't need this, I think. It says three turns. Okay, we should be able to get there within two. And it's not actually going to revolt in that amount of time. So we should be fine. Join me. As for Lightning Strike, you could get that first. But I really want to get that growth. You will listen. Okay, so at the Floating Pyramid, I'm just going to go... Actually, you know what? I'm going to go for growth. Because we want to develop this stuff up as well. We've got a good amount of money at the moment. And the more we can build this up, the sooner we can like leave it without needing a garrison. Because it's otherwise going to constantly revolt. Alright, turn 5. No enemies. Everything looks pretty quiet. Three turns until revolt. Might be a bit less than that. It just depends. Let me just see here. Let's get to about... The... Hang on, let me just see. Can he... This one here, get ahead. Alright, let's get him there to actually search the ruins first. Because that way we can get a bit of extra experience and money. 
Ugh. I use a cheat sheet for these. Alright, what's the answer? It is... That. Scarecrow Banner is not great, but, you know, a bit of extra money. It's not a lot, but... It also gave him some experience, so no complaints there. So it says it revolts in two turns. That's fine. So we'll basically we'll get there. It'll revolt. So we'll need to need to hire some units after we've actually gotten there. Which is fine, because our army's getting a bit small. Won't be able to occupy I mean um, search the ruin again, but that's fine. But you have to make sure though that if you're gonna do that, you search the ruin a turn before you arrive, because you can't search the ruin and occupy the ruin on the same turn. Okay, there's going to be a revolt in two turns now, but I want it to happen next turn. So I'm going to stand outside the settlement, and it's not going to make a bit of difference. So I just didn't time that perfectly. What I probably should have done was not... That that, that one turn where I um, didn't tax it, probably should have taxed it. Yeah, I'm just thinking, is there anything I could do to get that public order down? I mean, there's a, there's a fair bit of difference in there, so... Oh well, it's not that big of a deal. That just gives us more time to replenish. Okay, as for the Edict, probably want to go for growth more than anything. And then start planning out what we're going to do over here. So, Maku Peaks. I think it's around over here. If we just go and occupy that right away, there's going to be constant revolts there because of the lack of vampiric corruption, which is fine. But if you want to consolidate the whole province, we're going to have to take out uh, the New World Colonies. Now, they're not a huge threat, especially not at the beginning. They're only going to hire garbage units, but then again, so do we. But things to keep in mind. We'll just have to see how the things develop. At around turn 6 to 10, this is where big variations are probably going to start to happen within different campaigns. Whereas I might do one thing, and you might follow me exactly the same way, but you'll still get a different result. But if you do exactly what I've done here, follow that exactly, it should should essentially get the same result. Just, you know, just don't not tax it that one turn, and you should get the revolt this turn, uh, which would be better. Because even though you're a little bit damaged... I don't think the Vampire Revolt is going to be able to attack us. Alright, let's move on. I personally prefer Gunnery Whites over Morngold Hunters, so that's what I'm going to get there. Your prestige grows, my lord. News of your conquest. So, there's definitely going to be a Revolt this turn. Coming. And that's fine. We'll just wait here for it, because it'll show up over there. So, kind of unusual that they would actually make that attack there. I wasn't expecting that, but it's not bad at all. I mean, we can totally auto-resolve this. Just thinking, should I go for growth or money? Because that doesn't provide a hell of a lot of money. And I think we need growth more than that. We're good for money for the time being. Now, I did see that Hexawaddle declared war on the uh, New World Colonies. So that could be a good opportunity. Now, generally speaking, the best enemies to fight are the ones that are already down. You've heard the saying, kick them when I'm down. That's what you go to... That's, that's, that's the time to declare war on them. Don't wait until they're super strong to attack them. Wait until they're fighting a war on a different front where they can't defend their territories. That's the best time to go for them. Alright, now, I'd like to send this guy to just go and scout up here a little bit. Because before we go and declare war on them, it might be good to actually occupy the settlements out here first and just establish ourselves a little bit. It's possible that this province here will revolt at some point. Grab another one of them. Just wondering if we should send her over to the Shrine of Sotek first. Because every time we do that, it does cost money. Yeah, I think it'll be fine. Just go over there. In camp stance. It's easy settlements. But yeah, it's not going to take too long before a revolt. We'll, we'll be back here in time to deal with it. It'll be fine. And then over here, could go with growth, but I think I need some more cash coming in. Iron over here would... I mean, it does reduce our construction costs, but sometimes construction cost reduction 
is not that important as opposed to just actual revenue gained. Especially if you can't actually sell off those iron. So it's just... Either one, it's up to you, but personally I just prefer that. Alright, so on turn 9, let's go and occupy Shrine of Sotek. Easy stuff over here. We could go and search the ruin, but eh. No, no bother, really. Alright, we've got a few turns before it revolts, and it only takes us two turns to recover. And since we don't have anything else going on, it's totally fine to go and occupy these ruins. It's gonna be a while before we actually make a profit out of it, though. Could exempt it from taxation. Yeah, yeah, I think we'll do that. And you go and search the ruin over there. Uh, I could easily figure this out, but I don't have time to do that right now, so I'm just going to use my cheat sheet. And the answer is... Let's see if I can just find the right one. It's blue too. That's pretty good. Over here, we have four turns until revolt. We should be back here before then. Everything looks good. Could slow it down more with this, but being stingy, want the money, trying to save it up. Alright, is there anything here that we can raise the dead on? Yeah, we can get one of these. These are far better, in my opinion, than the pirate gunnery mob. But while we don't have a full stack, let's not disband any of these ones just yet. But yeah, we don't want to keep them for that long. So we can see that the, the New World colonies are really moving around a fair bit. Their strength ranking is still stronger than us. But they're clearly coming into conflict with Hexawaddle. And they've actually occupied Ziggurat of Dawn. So, it, it is a good time to attack them. Soon. Not yet, just soon. Alright, over here, we'll come up to here. And... Keep point. Uh, to, sorry, um... In camp. Good. Max out our replenishment so we get almost a full strength. And you attach over here, just... Whatever. Cool. Oh, we don't have any base vampiric corruption. Hmm. Well, with each settlement that we get, that'll provide some vampiric corruption, so... We'll sort it out eventually. Alright, let's... Oh, that reminds me. We've got a... Uh, should have a fleet captain we can recruit now. So yeah, I personally prefer uh, the vampire lore of magic over any of the others. I think they're way better. Now, as for the traits, none of these are particularly good. Now, I, if it was one of my campaigns, I'd probably recruit and just ban them until I got the traits that I wanted. But since it's just a ten turn, uh, sorry, twenty turn guide, I'm not going to do that this time. So I'm just going to recruit this, recruit this one, and um, it's mainly just to be using their magic. That's all. It does cost money, but I think they're worth it. Especially considering you can use Invocation of Nehek to regenerate the health of um, Necrofex Colossi. It makes them even stronger. Okay, so something good suddenly happened over the end turn there. Okay, that's actually revolting a bit sooner than I would have liked. Um, but the New World Colonies declared war on Skeggy. So that probably means that Skeggy's not going to come after us for a little while. But they've really stretched themselves quite thin. Now, it's not the end of the world if this revolts this turn, but if I exempt it from taxation, we can buy ourselves one additional turn. You know, at the cost of a thousand gold. Um, because we're... I could take this, or I could force March back here to deal with a revolt. <laughs> it's going to be cutting it short, so... I feel like we do need to get this done sooner rather than later. Probably should have switched it over to this last turn. Losing 10 infamy is better than losing 1,000 gold. Or, or, just forget it and we'll just suck up a revolt and it'll just be a little bit stronger when we get here. It'll be fine because it's, it's vampiric yeah. revolts. They suck. So let's not even worry about it. We're not making much money from here, so maybe don't tax it just yet. But we want to want to actually start making cash, 
Actually, we really need to be getting growth going in first. Let's get that going to begin with. It's a bit of an investment doing this. How are we going for growth? Okay, next turn we can build up to here, but this is why I said we needed the money. I'm not going to be able to afford it now. That's okay. That's not super urgent. we still got a good amount of growth coming in. So we probably need to sort out the revolts from these two regions, and then we can start actually fighting uh, the, uh, the new world colonies. At least we're starting to get some vampiric corruption in here now. That'll certainly help. So we can't make it down here in a single turn. Better get there next turn. If they besiege it, that'll be fine as well. We have... It says seven turns, but if we leave, it's going to be a little bit less. I definitely don't think we should force march down there. We'll just encamp here. We'll be at full strength next turn, and we should still be able to reach them. This is actually really good. So who gives a fuck about Defenders of the Great Plan? Suck my ass. They can't recruit any armies, so I'll take the idol. Sure. And that actually gives us enough money to build this. So, that's that's some good stuff right there. Anyway, they I don't think they do anything in diplomacy. So, they're, they're, how much they hate or like us is completely irrelevant. Anyway, we've got to make this attack here. Let me just see if there's any... I can get another one. But since money... Since there's a lot of things that we need to spend our money on. I don't know. I feel like we don't need to get extra troops right now. Uh, we did see over the end turn that Hexawidal made an attack on Port Reaver and totally failed. And so they're, they're fucked at the moment. Now, they might actually establish a trade agreement with us, which, since we don't have anything to trade with them, it's not going to be worth a hell of a lot. But, you know, 65 extra gold. Problem is, though, this is the, the direction you probably want to be expanding, and rather than trading with them, I reckon you should trade your sword for their lives, sort of thing. Like, shoot them. <laughs> Kill them. Just conquer the region. Um, but that'll be beyond the turn 20, so I'm not going to establish that trade agreement. If you're going to trade with someone, trade with someone that you're definitely not going to attack. Someone really far away. Or someone that you don't intend to go down at war with. Like, for example, the Hunts Marshall Expedition. Don't want to fight them, but they hate us, so... Well, they don't actually hate us, but they just don't, don't want to trade with us. That's, that's fine. It's not crucial that we trade. Okay, I thought I would have to fight this battle manually, but I guess not. Oh, damn. Well, there goes the Mongols. So, maybe I should have fought that battle manually, but in all honesty, we don't really need that unit. So, that auto-resolve was a bit deceptive. That's just a lesson that sometimes this happens in auto-resolve, but it's fine. Don't, don't need it. But yeah, it wasn't... It wasn't good. But if you look on the bright side, I also don't have to pay that unit anymore. Right, so public order here, it'll maintain for quite some time. And over here, we've got three turns until it revolves. We could potentially make an attack on Swamp Town, but they're recruiting really rapidly at the moment. And they're considerably stronger than us, but they're fighting a war on multiple fronts. So maybe we can get them, maybe not. Now might be a good time to grab this one, which I'd prefer just more gunners over the Mongols anyway. I don't like them, so I'm not going to get any right now. So that gives us the 16. Let's see here. Okay, so now now we can actually recruit generals at rank 5. Now we need to start making our way towards here, which won't be done within the 20 turns, but, you know, we plan ahead. Alright, and we can start recruiting generals. So... Let's see here. Usually like to get the ones of the vampire, because vampire magic's the best. Thing is as well, their loyalty also needs to be above five in order for it to work. So it might be better to train someone who's guaranteed to have between five and ten loyalty even if you're not going to... Because we're not going to necessarily put them in charge of an army. They're just put, put in the uh, the office. So I think we're going to do this. Because that's the safest bet. Loyalty 5, just enough needed to put her in as the fleet engineer. And then just level this one up pretty much the same way. Doesn't really matter though. And just disband it. 
Cool. That way, we're not paying any upkeep. And we have loads of extra growth coming in. And the construction cost is significantly reduced. Uh, maybe we'll just come over here, get ready to deal with the revolt, and we'll deal with that another time. Maybe even... Yeah, we can't build a public order building there, so just, just leave that be. This one over here is fine, and we just got to keep an eye on this stuff. It's going to be a while before vampiric corruption goes up high enough that we can just leave it alone. Okay, it's good they just sacked Port Reaver, because we don't want Hexawaddle to expand. We want that settlement because it's part of this province. But I'm also willing to go to war with Hexawaddle against them. Essentially what we want is for that army to leave the area. I mean, we could win against it. It shouldn't be too difficult. They disbanded a few of their units. That's a good sign that they're basically broke. You'll see this happen a lot with the AI factions. They'll recruit beyond their means and then all of a sudden they'll just disband like four or five units because they just they don't manage their money very well all right so it's definitely going to revolt here and that's fine just come stand over here and it doesn't make any difference now if you're wondering why aren't i doing any of this stuff here it's because the return on investment for bothering with this stuff is shit it's like 500 to 2000 gold I ain't worth my time trying to figure that stuff out you're more than welcome to do that stuff but i would say that I, like, I did that a little bit in, in other campaigns. I just found it's like, it's just a waste. Complete waste of money and time. It's like having an agent that costs 500 a turn dig up gold worth 500. You know, it's like, why bother? Alright, everything seems okay here. So next turn we should just have enough, yeah, we'll have just enough money to purchase the, the sea cabin there. And is there any more? 16 will be just fine. Yep. And then I still want to try and make my way over to Swamp Town before we hit 20 turns. Skaven Revolt. Well, that's actually really good because we can fight it twice. So yeah, we'll definitely want to fight this battle manually so that we can get as much experience out of them as possible. Even though it's an easy order resolve, it's just about getting that extra experience. Easy battle. The thing is, I was able to, put, able to put the heroes up front, and whatever damage we took, because of the vampire captain, I just used Invocation of the Heck to heal them. So, no damage. This is why vampire captains better than every other ones. Oh, she's so annoying. Madam Silos, my dear fan. And this time, it could just be auto-resolved. Hopefully we don't lose the sirens, but we shouldn't. And a little bit of cash on top of it, which is good. Now, funny thing here is that we're presented with a unique opportunity in that... I was gonna go to war with... With the New World Colonies, but then I'm like, well, Hexawaddle's right here. Why don't we just take that? Okay, so why not? I mean, they're in a bad, they're in bad shape since they lost the battle at Port Reva. Now, Hexawaddle is probably at tier 3. Large garrison, so kind of a difficult fight ahead. Guns are not the best at dealing with walls, but also lizardmen are not the best at defending walls. And there's gold there. So, you know, that's good. Now, we haven't actually made her any better of a commander, really. It's just been a lot of, like, boosting, boosting, uh, like, the campaign stuff. So, that's also going to work against us. And we don't have a full stack. That's not going to help. Um, they're going to have a lot of, like, beasts, I think. I mean, it's only going to be at tier 3, which means when we capture it, it'll be at tier 4. We're certainly going to need more guns. Because we're going to need to chase the fuck out of it. If we are going to go ahead with this. Which I'm... I'm thinking we should. Because... Like, these guys here... We don't have to worry about them too much. Because they'll then have to focus on Skeggy. <laughs> It'd be great if he had Wind of Death. Although not super effective against the... Uh, 
the uh, what's it called? Um, lizard men. Don't have a lot of bonus versus large in that, but we'll just make make use of the the gunnery mob. Now, isn't there a a thing over here that provides? Yeah, no, that's rotting Prometheus. Zombie pirate gunnery mob provides extra ammunition for it. Like ten percent would be an extra two shots. That's not bad at all. Let's have a look. We've got to look for someone that's going to be 5 out of 10. This guy here as well. Okay. 7. Good. And then just level him up. Whatever. It doesn't matter. And then disband him. Yeah, there we go. Two extra shots. And what else did we get out of that? Missile damage as well. Oh yeah, where do we get a Queen Bess? Level 12 with the faction leader. Ugh. That would be really helpful in that in that siege there. Okay, that's fine. Okay, there'll be another revolt in two turns. Eh, whatever. Could exempt it to buy us an extra turn. But it'll be fine. Let's upgrade Shrine of... Actually, do that one first. Oh, but now we can't afford to get the tier 4 here. Let me just see. Well, when we... When we occupy a hex... Oh, I don't know. <laughs> There's lots of stuff to build and you don't have enough money. Alright, cool, cool, cool. And then this will take 9 turns, which is... It would be a while, but that, that's okay. Um, it's not going to happen within this guide, but it would be shortly after if I was to continue playing it. And, you know, that would you know make these all half price. You'd very quickly be able to build this up with that, because that would go down to... It wouldn't be 4,500. It would actually be cheaper than that. Um, it would be 4,000, it'd be. Um, okay. Now, I saw the armies come over this way from... The New World Colonies. Okay, so they got wrecked by Hexwaddle. Okay, good to know. Yeah, I'm definitely going to need you in this battle. And thanks to the uh, the vampire magic, we'll be able to heal him constantly. That's going to be important. Pretty much no matter what they've got there, we should be able to handle it. Bet you didn't expect that. Oh, my friend. Okay. Okay, <laughs> there's a bit of stuff here. It's okay. It's okay. Don't panic. Alright. So, we got definitely need to get some more stuff. I don't want bloated corpses. I don't like them. I'd much rather zombie pirate gunnery mob them. Uh, let's see here. I didn't get a lightning strike, did I? No, that's fine. That's fine. Alright, let's do this. And even the odds seem, like, it's pretty fair. And the garrison is damaged thanks to the New World Colonies. Now, here's the thing about this. Me showing you this, uh, I think we got very lucky in this campaign. You could follow my steps exactly. But there's no guarantee that these guys are even going to go to war with each other. So this part of the guide, it's whatever. This is really a case of opportunism. That's the main thing to learn from this. If you see an enemy when they're down, kick them when they're down. Don't be like, oh, I don't know, it takes a while to look up, beat them. Kick them when they're down. They're begging you for peace, kick them in the face. Squash them, you know, till they're dead. Alright, now we don't have a lot of ammunition on the artillery, so we can't just go around blowing up all the towers. We do need to create a breach as well, but this is not the best defensible settlement, so we should only really need to destroy one fort tower. Cannons are good at taking out towers, but let's just see. It might be best if we could get these ones. Is she ranked as large? Yeah, she should be ranked as large. She's pretty fucking fat. Um... 
is probably the fattest character <laughs> in Total War Warhammer. Alright, and if everybody else hides, what that what what that's going to do is stop them from actually putting units up on the wall. Probably. Alright, let's go for that one there. Cause they'll they'll bring in reinforcements over here every now and again. Gotta keep in mind we've got virtually no melee capabilities with the infantry. We have to be shooting them with guns, which basically means cheesing. But you wouldn't be on this guide if you weren't okay with cheesing. So they used up about five and a half shots. Yeah, there's no way we only used up three shots on that. Alright, still got 13 shots, so about half of our ammo is still remaining. Alright, good. No missile units up on the wall, that's what we want to see. Alright, get these guys to not fire at will. And we... It's annoying to do this, but if you want to get Hexawaddle this early, it's, it's what we got to do. It's not like we were going to be able to get um, Depth Guard with pole arms at this stage. Or it wouldn't really be that viable anyway, even if we could get them. Okay. A lot of guys up on the wall here. Definitely don't want to shoot them. Because we just won't be able to. Now, how much of magic do we have? 60. So, base amount, no bonuses or penalties at the moment. Ah, oh, that reminds me. Of course, we've got uh, more powder. Of course. Oh, we can, we can destroy more towers, no problem. Now, move over here a little bit and create a breach there. That'll, like I said, that'll allow us to shoot into here and into here. Slow and steady wins these sieges. We might walk out of here with virtually no damage. If we're patient enough. Maybe put this one up in front. Ah, he's destroying the cannons. It's not good. No Nehek can bring back a cannon piece. So they don't have that much magic. If I keep him here, maybe... We can waste their ammo a little bit more. Yeah, that's good. That, that's actually working. Oh yeah, stay away from the, the tower there. Very powerful towers. Good, that's it. We're shooting at the Feral Stegodon. That's what we want to see. Actually, you know what? We might be able to use her to lure guys out of the settlement so we can shoot them. Yeah, if they don't have guys up on the wall and you put them on fire at will, it's fine. But if they have guys up on the wall, don't put them on fire at will. There's the victories in our grasp. We just need to do a little bit more damage to them and they'll get the army loss penalty. Because we've received virtually no damage at this point. We've still got plenty of ammo. Alright, army loss penalty should be inflicted pretty soon. There's not that much of them left. Ah, oh, there we go. I was right. Now, to make sure we've essentially taken as little damage as possible while they're running away. We've got to be quick with this. This is another reason why vampire magic's so good. While they're retreating, get all your damaged units together. And just pump up a little bit of extra health. You don't have to do this, but it's cheesy, so I like it. Ah, oh, I missed this one. That's fine. It's tempting to sack it. It's a lot of money. Yeah, it is a lot of money. Um... Yeah, because oh, it's going to be a tier 1 if I do that. I'm going to sack it. It's just too much money. I couldn't resist because it was a tier 3 and now it's a tier 2. Yeah, and this will make it tier 1. But it's fine. It doesn't take that long to grow it up. And we don't have access to the gold mine. It's not that much money anyway. So it's fine. And it's more a case of just doing something. So that was a good amount of experience, I guess. And we, we've got the money now that we can invest into Silostra's ship. Uh, let's see here. Can reduce upkeep costs or go lightning strike. Probably want lightning strike at this point. And then start working on reducing upkeep costs later. Alright, now we can grab that. And that'll reduce upkeep costs as well. And that. And we still got money left over. But... Now we have our fingers in three provinces. It's going to revolt here next turn. But it's it's fine if it does. We'll just make our way back. 
should be fine. And over here we've got uh, four turns until it revolts. Might be a good idea to to do this because I really don't want to have to go all the way back here to deal with the revolt. And let's upgrade that because we want to upgrade those ports. They're worth quite a bit of money for us. Also, if we build this here now, we'll be able to do this edict, which will be 1,500 gold for us the first time we do it. Which we're not going to get a second time because we've only got three turns left to go. Now, what's probably going to happen here is they're going to besiege the settlement, which means we're not going to get any replenishment, and that building's probably not going to finish either. Not the end of the world, but I'll just put it in there anyway. That's still got done, so that's good. Now, you could auto-resolve this, which is what I'm going to do. But if you fight it manually, you better get two battles out of them. But we need to head back, so I'm just going to get rid of them. We've, we've leveled up Silostra enough for now. That we don't need to tease it too much. And that's Hexawidal dead, turn 18. Of course, we got pretty lucky with that, that they got wrecked by, by, by these guys. And in fact, because these guys are in such bad shape... We really should press the attack on them now before they get a chance to recover. So they got no armies. They're recruiting a new one down here. Problem is though, that these guys are here, right? But in all honesty, if they were to recapture Maku Peaks, or we'll just capture it. Who fucking cares? They're not gonna do it for ages anyway. So now might be an excellent chance for us to, to really hit it. Could attack them right now. Look, I think we've got enough time to come down over here, attack this, and then make our way over here and attack this before they hit full stack. Because capturing Port Reva right now is not going to matter that much. Still at war with Skeggy, and they want peace. Good, I don't want to fight. Yeah, just, just get rid of that. Because Ziggurat of Dawn, are they still at war with Skeggy? Yeah, alright. So what's probably going to happen here, if I capture Port Reva, and then the next turn after that capture Swamp Town, and then we make our way up through here, we might just be able to get there into... Well, there's only two turns left, so... What does it matter? The Empire Scouts are no strangers to war. Eat my... Undead dick. It's not that much money to sack it, so Make we'll just occupy it. Of course, as time goes on now, we're we're losing 10 per turn, but we've got plenty of um, infamy, so not a big deal. Alright. Yeah, can't go reach it by this point. Maybe we can reach it this way. It's hard to say. Yep, we did. Alright, since we're at the end of the guide, I'm just going to auto-resolve this, but really you should fight it manually. Oh no, I lost a zombie pirate decade mob. Might as well start the game over again. Oh. Oh. Oh, I'm so greedy. I can't resist that. We won't be able to capture it this turn, but. Greed is good. It's not like they're going anywhere. And for six grand, it's pretty damn good. So yeah, here we are, turn 20. Things are looking pretty good. So this is going to revolt over the next turn. But like I said, even if we did lose the settlement, it just it doesn't matter. And I forgot to do this last turn, but here's an extra 1,500 gold for us. That doesn't cost us anything. And here's Swamp Town. And there we are, 20 turns. So, where we would go from here is... Well, we need to see what these guys do. It's, it's not a huge concern if they come over to, to here and recapture it. They might have another force come down. Not a big deal. But what we'd come down here, take this out. Still really want to try and maintain public order here, so... Maybe actually have to deal with the revolt here first, and then make our way over here. Because they'll besiege that for quite a few turns before they launch the attack. Uh, but they probably would besiege it next turn. Uh, would have been nice if that was done, 
not the end of the world. Or what you could do is take that out and then come back over here and deal with this and then just finish them off. But you've still got a lot of running around to do doing it this way because you've got a lot of territory that you just can't maintain public order on. But I think that's a pretty strong start. That being said, there's going to be a lot of variation. But the key things to know about this guide is take out the blue vipers right away. Don't leave them hanging. And then wait for an opportunistic time to go in and attack. It's okay to sack a settlement into oblivion because you do make a lot of uh, money in doing so. And the primary thing to be focusing your money on is getting this up to tier 5 and then eventually getting this built up so that you can get the Necrofex Colossi without having to recruit it through settlements. You should be able to get it by around turn 30 to 40 and essentially have a full stack of Necrofex Colossi by turn 50. And once you've got that, no one's going to stop you. Anyway, that's the end of this one, and don't forget in the comments below to let me know which one you want me to cover next, preferably not one I've already covered, and I'll see you next time, fuckers.